Hi, this is David Lee. Welcome to my Q&A. Today we're doing it in my conference room, one of my conference room. And you see kind of all these pictures of people that I've known or they're my clients. And it's very interesting, kind of old school situation, but I like that. Because um, there are people here that I've sold to like Beyonce and DJ Khaled and Daniel Wu and Paris Hilton. Well, the Ferrari to Monterey uh, rally was really great. We went to uh, Tahoe. Uh, Ferrari had arranged a couple of days driving around Tahoe, the beautiful, around the lakes and the lunches and dinners. And I think that driving the car was cool. The, the Ferrari, getting to meet the Ferrari executives is cool. But mainly I think what a lot of people like is the uh, networking and the commodity of the other Ferrari uh, owners and just getting to know other cool people, right? So that was really fun. Um, the third day we went down to uh, Hillsburg. You know, I'm a wine guy, so that was like wine country in the Sonoma County, which was really great. Um, so uh, we did that and spent a great time there and dinner and, and, and lunches. We got to see the uh, 812 competition uh, there. Um, of course, I'm gonna get off for the competition Aperta, which is the convertible version, which only made 499. The competition coupe is 999. So, so, it, but it was a great looking car. We got to see the physical, real one there, and we we went through and looked through all the insides and and the engine compartment and the trunk space and the interior compartment, and everything. So it was cool. Then we ended up at uh, the last day at Half Moon Bay to have lunch, and then all the way into Laguna Seca. Now the cool thing about it is I was driving the SF90 on this rally throughout the whole time, and people were like, "Oh, you know, very excited about the SF90." because it was a thousand horsepower and it's four wheel drive and it's got this hybrid system. And I and I driven like over a thousand miles, even on regular roads um, through this rally before I got to Laguna Seca. So I really got to use all the different functions of the, the hybrid and the performance system and the qualifying system, the full electric, everything, uh, all the different modes, because I had a lot of driving time to, to play with all of them. So that was really interesting. But the real test is on the track. How does it do on the track? You got all the numbers are good, but how does it do? So we had opportunity to go into Nakuna Seca, had a lap session, following a professional driver, and and you know you follow him. He showed you the line. You follow him, and so I've driven Laguna Seca before, but uh, this it's nice as a refresher to have somebody to follow. But he goes fast, and you try to stay with him. I can tell you the SF90 is amazing on the track. It, there was no squealing at all as I was going so fast. It, was, it gripped the track. It was low center of gravity. It was powerful uh, when I needed to push on it. It was just amazing car uh, on the track. So that is where I really judged the performance of cars on the roads. You don't really get to judge it. But on the track, uh, wow, that's, I think that's the most, that and the LaFerrari is uh, uh, the most comfortable on the track car for me. I think that the, um, Obviously, the technology is even, you know, because it's a, it's a V8, right, uh, with the electric engines. So even though it's not as big of an engine as a LaFerrari, but, you know, somehow the engineering is really great and, and, and powerful, and, I guess, in four-wheel drive and 1,000 horsepower, it's just out of this world. Yeah. You know, for many years, a lot of people ask me to... Um, you know, can I be their mentor, right? And because they've seen me, I, I go back to USC or other schools and I do guest lectures and I talk about uh, entrepreneurship, I talk about family business, I talk about my experience and a lot of the uh, work ethics that I have and so forth. And I've been doing that for many years. I'm on the board of USC Business School, so you know, I, I'm kind of uh, pro-education, I try to help the schools and, and so forth. So I, I, but I didn't want to, I want to do it in the right way where a proper way to teach people. So really what has kind of transpired and and even I didn't want to just do it myself. I wanted to bring in uh, a lead professor, one of the head uh, professor from USC Entrepreneur School to kind of do this with me because I want to put out really something professional, something that is helpful to people that want to be mentor. So I think what we put together now with Titan Education is something of a kind of a right now an executive uh, course study so it's for people that are already kind of in business and want to take it to the next level so 
uh, what are some of the things that um, that maybe they don't see, the perspectives they don't see. Because uh, somebody could be very well making money, but just because you make money doesn't mean you really have a good foundation and, and, and have seen all the different blind spots and the potentials and opportunities, right? So hopefully that's what we'll bring to the table. And um, so we, we do have a program right now. I think a lot of times people, they get wealthy, they either forgot where they came from or they were just, you know, very proud of their success and, and they come off uh, kind of uh, show-offish or uh, arrogant or, or something like that, you know. And I, I don't think they mean to, but they just kind of, they don't know, they don't see it. They don't, they don't, they don't sometimes see it. I think um, I came, I, you know, I came from humble beginnings, you know, my family. And I always had, I was taught by my father, always remember uh, where you come from, always be humble, you know, and, you know, you think you're so great, there's another person greater, you know, uh, you think you're wealthy, there's obviously another person more wealthy. So there's, in the in the whole scope of thing, what, you know, what does that mean? Um, also, I'm religious, so I, I, you know, I don't take material wealth as identity. That's not my identity. That's just what I'm blessed with and, and what I'm responsible for. So. You know that that so it's not my identity, and I don't you know really view it that way. So I think I do remember that um, you know how I worked before to be able to um, get to where I'm at right now. I, I feel like I need to continue. If I don't, I, you can always regress. It's never a situation where you think once you have it, you're gonna forever get it. It's in business, especially. It's a constant changing situation environment. If you don't adapt and you don't change along with it. You're going to regress. You, you think you will always have your position. You will lose your position. So I'm always afraid to 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 lose with the position. Not so much for myself, but for my family. You know, um, I'm second generation. I've taken what my father uh, had uh, had created and taken it to the next level. I'm not going to let him down or my family down. Okay, so I'm going to work as hard as I need to. So that's just kind of my personal ethics and. Um, yeah, that keeps me going. You know, I, I've bought a lot of cars in the past and I've sold a lot of cars. You know, like Carrera GT, I bought it, sold it. I bought it again, I sold it. I bought McLaren uh, before and I've sold it, you know. And um, things like that, Lamborghinis, and I sold it because I guess for me, it, for whatever reason, you know, I'm so connected with Ferrari. And I love Ferrari. Most of my cars, 95% of my cars are Ferraris. But it just seems like if I don't, a car that I don't get to drive so much, uh, it's it's a waste. So then I don't want to keep it. Um, but I can tell you that I like, let's say, a Lamborghini Miura. You know, I like uh, Miuras. I like the Mercedes uh, uh, CLK, you know, the, the old one. Um, I like uh, McLaren F1, you know. Uh, I like some of these other other really iconic cars, but um, if I were to buy them, it just it just I don't know. It just it would be it wouldn't be in my strategy of my what I'm doing. So that's why I haven't bought it. Right, you know that was the big thing I think in the in the kind of the car uh, industry. Uh, they got a big splash this year was really about Lamborghini, Countach. And Countach, and it's that way because Countach is a very iconic car. I mean, I, when I was into high school, I mean, I had the poster of the Countach. I'm, sh I'm sure a lot of guys that I talked to did, you know, that's my age. And and the Countach was just amazing. I remember when it first came out, it was so high tech, so new in design, so different than everything else. Everybody wanted to have it. The doors come comes up like scissor, you know. The the just it was so slanted, so aerodynamic. It just seems faster than heck standing still, you know. And uh, so that was one of the cars that I dreamed about, one of my dream cars, along with the 288 GTO, which I saw in the you know Road and Track magazine. But um, and and after that, and, and went to Diablo and Marciago and so forth. You know, for them to, to come back and, and use the Countach name and, and to put it in the, um, in the new, kind of a new car, I think it's really, um, really cool and they have to be something very carefully done because they don't want to mess up, you know, a very iconic name. 
And I think they did a, a decent job. You know, you're going to have people that love it or not. You're going to have people that don't love it. You know, it's so the, the, the report's all over the place. But one thing I do think is that I think they're making low numbers and, and having high dollar volume. And I think they could have, the car that I saw could have been more available to more people. I, I, that, that's some, just me. And, and then therefore, with more production, the price go down, right? Instead, they're making a very limited you know, few, and then they're, they're, it's, I think, like $3 million. So, I don't know. Um, to me, it doesn't really look like, wh what I saw didn't look like a, a $3 million car that um, the Lamborghini have produced in the past, like the Venimo, Venino and some of the other cars. But, you know, I'm not a Lamborghini guy, really, and uh, that's just my take on it. <music>So 2013 is when I built uh, the building where my uh, flagship store, Hingwali Jewelers in San Gabriel is. Uh, it's 15,000 square foot, one of the largest uh, you know, watch and jewelry stores in America, one of. Really big, a lot of big selection. We're really proud of it. And uh, now as far as in the past, watch companies, uh, and although I'm an authorized dealer for 30 different brands, uh, including Rolex and Cartier and a lot of great brands like that, AP with Shamil, right? Um, the, they don't really allow us to sell online because um, what, what our job as authorized dealers are is to really service our immediate area, right? When you're online, it kind of, you go in the lines of blur. You're, you're everybody's area. The, the, the watch company, because this is a luxury product, wants you to come into the store and experience the, the luxury of buying one of these watches. It's not just a commodity in buying online. And when you're buying online, it's just a commodity, right? It's just you buying it, you know, perhaps who has the best price, who has available to be buy it. There's no relationship, there's no experience or nothing. So they really kind of um, don't want you to do that. And a lot of the good brands, a lot of the good brands, they don't allow us to do that. So when you see online, those are probably not authorized dealers. Most likely they're not authorized dealers because we're not allowed to do that. I wouldn't say, but there are some product that allow us. So if you come to my website, like hangwali.com, uh, there are some product you can buy. And that, that, those are maybe product that is not so limited. There's more product and, and you can buy that on that. And that's okay because they allow you to do it on, uh, in our website. But a lot of the, the really hard to get brands, and if you see them online, it's, it's definitely not an authorized dealer, which has an issue on that in itself, you know. Um, so, but. But no, so that's, that's kind of what happened with us. <music> Organizing life, like anything, is the most important. Balance is the most important. Um, family, business, your personal time is all important. So to balance it is everything. Uh, I really, you know, it's a constant uh, adjustment, you know, to not to do, let's say for me, not to do too much social things, not to do, you know, to keep a certain business for the business. Even business, I have many different businesses, so how, you know, what, what's the timing for everything? Your personal stuff, your hobbies and, and your friends, you know, how, you know, how do you do that? And your family, right? My wife, my kids, you know, and so forth. So all that's a balance that needs to be kept and, 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 and disciplined or else, you know, you can't just say, oh, I like doing this, so I'm just gonna do that and forget about everything else. Then problems gonna happen, so. You know, I do love uh, F1 and I've been keeping up with it and when I thought uh, Max uh, Verstappen was kind of getting the lead for a while, I thought, wow, maybe he has a shot. But it seemed recently that um, uh, Lewis Hamilton has, has pulled it together and, and gained a lot of points for Mercedes and himself. So it looks like, to me, it looks like he's kind of back on the on focus, back kind of on, in the zone, and he's gonna probably take it take it uh, to the end again. I mean, you know, it, it's really been uh, Lewis and Max been been the really the, the the ones fighting for that spot. But it looks like I think it's Lewis. Thanks for watching this Q and A video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, like, and share this video to your friends, and we'll see you next time.